Okay guys, I'm going to go ahead and do a quick unboxing and I'm going to walk you through the modes on the GP from Evo. So, first off, I've got some really good instructions here, lots of really good information there. On the back, you got your warranty card, so don't forget to fill that stuff out. You got all this fun stuff in here. I'll take everything out so you can see it. Um, your handle extension, you got your battery charger, you got your USB cable that plugs into your battery charger. When you're charging this, there's some red lights that will come on. That means your batteries are charging. When they turn blue or green, then that means that they're done charging. You can take them out and they're ready to go. Okay, so here's all the stuff. We've got your gimbal, the GP. We're gonna go ahead and install the batteries really quick. Just like a flashlight, they go in like that and like that, whoops. And then this extension goes right here. Just like that. And you wanna make sure that these two pieces get nice and snug. You can't have them loose. So make sure those are nice and snug and super simple. Now on the GoPro, we do have a charge plug. So if you look right underneath this motor right here, there's a little white plug that's actually on this part right here of the gimbal. That little white plug gets plugged in and then this plugs into your GoPro so you can actually charge your GoPro with the batteries that are in the gimbal here so that they'll last a lot longer. And in order to put your GoPro in, you don't really necessarily have to remove this clip at all. You can just loosen these up just a tiny little bit, those little thumb screws, and then your GoPro will just slide right into that mount, just like that. And then what you, you just want to tighten that up finger tight. It doesn't have to be Superman tight or anything like that. Just like that and you're ready to go. So we're going to go ahead and plug this plug into the GoPro. So that just goes right underneath the GoPro just like that and it plugs into the side right here into the USB. Now when we go ahead and power this on you're going to get a charge to the battery. So the way to turn it on is you want to have it on a flat surface where it's not moving so that it will be able to do its calibration. There's a button right here on the bottom. We'll click that button. You'll see a quick sequence of lights. Boom, it's done calibrating. Now this light is going to keep flashing. Four flashes means that your batteries are fully charged. Three means that your batteries are 75%. 2 means 50 and 1 means 25 and it's time to charge. You pick it up and you'll see it's not doing anything, it's not working. So you have these buttons here and the one in the middle kind of off to the side is your mode button. So if you push and hold the mode button in, it'll activate your motor. So you could see it just turned on. So now as I'm turning and moving around, it's actually taking up any of the movement that I've got in my wrist and it's making that flat and smooth and nice and clean. So when you turn it on originally, it's going to default to mode one, which is the heading follow mode. So as I turn, it's going to smooth out all of my shots. It's going to keep the horizon flat so that it's not going to tip the camera this way. That's really going to be a, a really common way that you're going to want to shoot with this thing. So if you wanted to lock your camera into a position, let's say that you're going to be walking towards a doorway and you don't want the camera to be turning left or right, you just want it to stay there, you just push that mode button one time and that's going to do a heading lock. So now you can see as I'm turning my wrist, the camera is not turning. It's going to stay pointing that direction until I hit that button again. I hit it one more time and it releases it and now I'm back into the heading follow mode. The uh, other mode is if you click the mode button twice, it's going to go into the heading and pitch follow mode. So we'll go ahead and click that twice. Now you can see as I'm tipping the camera or the gimbal up and down, it's actually moving. The camera is following that move. And then also it's going to smooth out your moves left and right. So 
it's actually a really cool move if you're following somebody down some stairs and you want to kind of just make that move instead of using your tilt buttons you don't need to do that so i'm going to go back and show you what the tilt buttons do really quick so in mode one which i just clicked that one time and i'm back in mode one as i move the, or as i push the buttons you'll see that it's going to turn the camera up and down it's going to do a tilt for you and, and when you let go of the button it's going to smooth out that shot in mode two I'm gonna go ahead and now you can see that as I'm tipping, it's tipping. In mode two, as I push those buttons, now it's gonna move the camera. It's gonna actually change the horizon on it. So let's get it back to normal there. So also when you're in this mode two in the heading pitch and follow mode, if you were to go ahead and just tip the whole thing over, you can use this in the upside down mode, which is really nice too. So if you are needing to get really low shots to the ground, you can do that. Um, you can see it's still following though. Let's say that you just want to go ahead and get some low shots and you don't want, you want to keep it so that it's pointing this direction all the time. Just hit the button one time and then you'll see now it's stopped following me and it's going to keep the camera level to the, to the horizon. To get back out of that, to flip it back over, you have to hit the button twice, put it back into mode two and then you can flip it back over and your right side up again. Um, we do have some really nice accessories for it. We've got this clamp, which a lot of guys are using, just simply goes on the handle here and then you can put, you know, any kind of whatever stick you want to use um, on this end here. So you can, and it's a quick release, so it's toolless and it's just a quick little screw that you undo and then these two pieces come apart. Um, just like that. So if you want to just leave it on your handle and then when you're ready to shoot and you want to go ahead and do something that's got like a, some move to it, you just screw that guy back on and it's linked together like that. It's really nice when you are doing like really tall shots, like let's say that you want to do like a crane shot or something, um, you can actually use that handle and once you get it out there and you get, you know, a six foot handle on it, you can really get some cool long moves. And it also helps to kind of smooth out your shot. If you're walking with it and you're holding it back here, it takes out a lot of the movement that you get from walking like this. If you have a handle on it, it's almost like a shock absorber. So even if your hand is moving and you're walking, it, it holds the camera a lot steadier. When you do have that, we've got this little fob here that you can control your all of your modes right here remotely so you get about a six foot reach this just plugs into the side of the handle right here and then i have all the mode functions right here with this that i need so i can go up and down i can switch modes so if i want to go back into mode two i can double click it now you can see i'm in the follow pitch mode again and so it's a really cool thing to have, especially if you're going to get a extension pole. And that is something I suggest everybody gets. These little clamps are super cheap. The little remote's actually pretty inexpensive as well. So just adds to the quality of the shots that you're going to end up getting with this. When you are done using it, if you want to leave it calibrated, if you're going to be on a boat or a plane or a car, and you're not going to be in a position where it's going to be able to be calibrated, you can go ahead and just power off the motors. Don't use this button. You can just hold this button down. You'll see the motors will kind of just stop working. Now it's still on. You can see the, the LED flashing. So we still have power to it. It's just not going to be drawing very much power. So then when you're ready to use it again and you're in the car, in the plane, on the boat, whatever it is, if you power it back on, you still have that calibration. If you have any questions, feel free to ask us. And thanks for watching.